Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to install Oracle OEM on Windows. OEM stands for Oracle Enterprise Manager and we will be installing version 13.5 on Windows environment. These are the softwares that I have used. I have used Oracle Database 19C for Windows. This is for the OEM repository database. Then we need Oracle Enterprise Manager 13.5 for Windows and the this particular tutorial is done on Windows Server 2019. Now what I will not be covering is how to install Windows Server 2019. So we will not see the installation of Windows operating system. These are some of the prerequisites for OEM. We need to have the redistributable versions of Visual C++ 2010, 2012 and 2015, the 64-bit, so we don't need the 32-bit, we only need the 64-bit. Make sure to download and install all of these three. The, these are the high-level steps. There are two main steps. First is creating the database for OEM repository. So we need to have a database for the OEM repository. We will use the name of the database as OEM rep. You can use whatever name you want. It's your choice. The second is the second part is installing the OEM. Now, remember to, to install the database, we need the Oracle 19C database home. So we will be also installing the Oracle 19C database home. So the steps are download the Oracle 19C database home for Windows, extract the software, Run setup.exe to register the software. Once the software has been registered or Oracle 19C database home is installed, create the listener using NetCA, create the database using DBCA, and perform some database config changes for the OEM because the, this particular database needs to connect, connect to OEM and use as the OEM repository. So we need to do some changes. Once all of this create database is done, Let's go ahead and download the OEM and run this particular setup file to install the OEM. Now, I just want to highlight NetCA stands for Oracle Net Configuration Assistant. DBCA stands for Database Configuration Assistant. The, the NetCA is used to create listener, drop listener. Database Configuration Assistant is used to create database, drop database, etc. Now, this is the important note. Do not forget the database sys password. Do not forget the OEM sysman password. So once you once you install the OEM, make sure to note the sys password and OEM sysman password securely. Now that we have seen all these steps, let's go ahead and connect to our server. <clears throat> now, the first part, let me show it to you. The as I told you that we need the the prerequisite. These are the three prerequisites. We need this. So before installing, let me show you. What's, what's there in the, the control panel, program and feature. And you, you can see that I got 7-zip, Firefox, and Notepad++. These are the only three softwares that I have installed. So these are the only three softwares that has been installed. What we need is we need these three uh, redistributables. So let's say, let me take this and open the Firefox. And let's, instead of searching for only the 2010 let's say latest because this one will give us all so let's say download all of this so let's use this latest this one it will give us all of it so instead of searching for one by one so the we as i told you we need the 64 bit we we don't we need the 64 bit so just download the 64 bit so the this is the this is the 2015 to 2022 so this is the this is the link 64 bit so let's download that that is getting downloaded Open the location where it is getting downloaded. Re let's view, uncheck this. And uh, give me a minute. And let's rename this as 2015 to 2022. Or otherwise what I'll do, I will rename this here. So let's say 2015. So this is the 2015 version. The next is we need the, we need the 2010 and 2012. So let's search for 2013 we are not interested so 2012 again 
64 bit. So we'll click on this particular link. Let's download that. Let's here. This is 2012. Let's rename that 2012. So we got two and the third one is 2010. So here is 2010 again, 64 bit. Let's click on that. And then it's going to download the, the 2010. So we got all three downloaded. We need to install them. So I have already shown you the control panel. In the control panel, you if you see the control panel, you, we don't have anything. So let's go ahead and install one by one. So run as administrator, 2010, 64-bit, yes. Accept the license, install. That's done, finish. Click on 2012, run as admin, 64-bit again, 2012, accept the license install that's done close and the last one is 2015 to 2022 2015 to 2022 64-bit again accept install now that let's go back to the program feature go back come again and you can see here we got 2010 64-bit 2012 64-bit 2015 to 2022 64-bit so we have installed all of these three softwares on our Windows Server. And you can see this is the Windows Server 2019. So I'm doing this on Windows Server 2019. So the prerequisites have been downloaded. The next part is we need to now create the database. For that, we need to install the Oracle 19C database home. And, and also we need this particular software. So let's download the software first. We'll keep the software ready with us. So we need to down download the 19C database home and Oracle Enterprise Manager. So we don't need all of these screens. So let's close all of these tabs and search for, we need download Oracle database 19C for Windows. So search for this and you, you can see we got this particular link. Let's click on that particular link. You need to sign in, you need to sign in. Once you sign in, if you don't have the Oracle account, create an Oracle account using your any using your personal email ID. If it is for personal work, if it is an official, use your official email ID and download the. And here you can see we are downloading Oracle Database 19C for Microsoft Windows 64. So we are downloading this particular software. Be careful what you are downloading. We are downloading Oracle Database 19C for Microsoft Windows 64 bit. Let's click on that. Agree for this. And what, what will happen is in the background. So let's go to the downloads. Let's clear this. And you can see right now here in the background, the 19C database home is getting downloaded. Now I have already downloaded this particular software. It's already downloaded on this particular machine. So I, I'm going to cancel this. If, if you have not downloaded, let the download finish. So that's done. The next part is download Oracle and Enterprise Manager enterprise manager 13.5 so if i say windows it doesn't give me the proper link so let's say oracle enterprise manager downloads click on this and then here you can see for windows we are going to use this so this is the 13.5 this is the latest available so let's click on the windows one it gives the list of five files here one two three four five one two, three, four, five. You need to download all of these four files, five files, sorry. So click on this, let it start downloading. Second, let it start downloading. Third, let it start downloading. Fourth, let it start downloading. Fifth, let it start downloading. So let's go to the downloads again and let me clear, let me show you one, two, three, four, five. So all of these five files, and you can see that they are pretty big softwares, 1.4 GB, 1 GB, 2 GB, 2 GB, 1.3. So we are talking about close to, so we are talking about close to 8 GB, probably 2 to 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, close to 8 GB. We are talking about more than actually 8 GB because here it is 4.41, etc., etc. Now, again, I have downloaded this particular software. So I'm going to close this, right? And I'm going to say clear downloads. So the download has already been done. And I'll show you the downloads here. You can see I've already downloaded this particular software. So here you can see this is the database home. And these are the five softwares, the e Enterprise Manager 13.5. So one, two, three, four, five. So I've downloaded those five files. 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव नो नीड टू एक्सट्रैक्ट एंड ऑल द स्टफ नो नीड टू एक्सट्रैक्ट सो लेट्स दी लेट्स नाउ सो द डाउनलोड पार्ट इज डन सो नाउ वी हैव डन दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट सो वॉट विल डू आई आई गॉट टू नेटवर्क एडेप्टेड सीयर्स वन फॉर द इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी वन इज द वन इज द local one so let me disable this i don't need the internet connectivity again it's optional you don't have to do that that this particular adapter provides me the network uh, connectivity so i'm i have disabled that particular part so let's now let's go and <clears throat> let's go and uh, what we will do now is we will we will uh, we will now install the database part so we will install the database home so for that to install the database home we need to create some directories so what we can do we can create the directories like this so we can manually create the directories or what we can do is we can create the directories using the command prompt so let's do that so let, these are the two directories so these are the two directories oracle database oracle database base so these are the two directories this directory this is the oracle home directory again you can choose your naming convention this is the the database base location so these two directories i have created again as i told you you can use your own set of directories based on how you how your organization or your naming convention is so that's done now before before installing the database let's do one thing let's let's see what is the host name of this particular machine so let me clear the screen and if i run the host name you can see the host name is oem and if i say the ip config you will see that ip is 192.168.1.120 so this is the ip so what we will do we will add this entry in the host file the etc host file so let's go to and where is the etc host file so it is under the c drive windows system 32 drivers etc under this this is the file and i won't be able to edit that particular file so let's do one thing let's copy that particular file to let's say documents and edit that particular file maybe with the notepad if you want and we what we'll do we will add the this particular ip so let me copy this particular ip here and let's add the host name save that particular file and let's copy that particular file back so from the documents let's copy that particular file back to the original so we can what we can do we can delete the original file uh, and then we can copy that particular file so let's do that so we have copied and let's verify that whatever changes we did those changes so you can see whatever changes i have done those changes are now in the etc host file so that's and where is the etc host file windows system 32 drivers etc this is the location of that particular file so that's done we can close this safely and uh, now what we are going to do is we have created the directories we have created this directory this is for the database home this is for the database base let's use let's extract the software in this particular and i kept this software in uh, e drive so let's go to the softwares and here let's extract that particular software so let's use this particular utility uh, let's use the 7 zip utility and say open archive and we will say you will say extract and we will try to extract that particular software to c drive oracle database so what will happen in the background under this directory as you can see the that particular software is getting extracted using the 7 zip utility i've used the 7 zip utility to extract the database home once this particular software has been extracted so right now the 10 percent completed it's going to take some time so because it's a pretty big software so once the software has been extracted what we are going to do is we are going to run the setup.exe to register that particular software the oracle 19c database home on this particular machine so the that once that is done then we will be able to create the listener and create the database so give it a minute give it a minute for the 7 zip to complete close to close to 76 percent complete give it a minute 78 80 should be done anytime soon as i told you it's a pretty big software so it will take some time and again my system is not really powerful it's not really powerful so that's why and we can safely close this 
And here you can see under the Oracle database, we got the setup.exe. Run this as administrator. It will give us two options. It will give us the two options. One is to set up the software and the second option, the second option is set up the software. The first option is set up, install and create the database. We'll go with the set up the option. We will, this will not choose this option. We'll say set up the software. So first we'll set up the software and then we will create the listener, create the database. So let's click on the next. And uh, actually let's, inst before doing this, let's, let's cancel this actually. Before doing this, what we will do is we will, every time we want to connect a database, you know that we need to set three environmental variables. One is Oracle Home, Oracle Base, Oracle SID. In Aura ENV doesn't work in Windows. It works in Linux. It doesn't work in Windows. So what we need to do, we need to manually set this. So instead of manually setting this, what I, what we can do, we can edit the environmental variables. So let's go to edit environmental variables, edit system environmental variables. And here, click on environmental variables. Don't edit for one user, edit the system variables. And what we can do, we can click on new and we can enter the this particular name of the variable. This is the name of the variable and this is the value of the variable. Now I can do this manually for all of this. So that's done for one. I can do this for manually for all of this. So let's, or I can use a PowerShell script, something like this. So let's do that. You, again, you can do this manually if you don't want to use the PowerShell script. So let's run the PowerShell script as admin. And let's run those three commands. So that's done. And now if I cancel this and if I look at the environmental variable, you can see we got Oracle Base, Oracle Home and Oracle SID set. And if I launch the command prompt now, and if I say echo the Oracle Home, let's then it will give us the it will give us the value of oracle home and if i say echo oracle base it will give the value of base which means that this particular variable and every time we launch the command prompt we don't have to set this so it makes your life easier it makes my life easier so if you have multiple databases multiple homes then probably this is not an idea good idea but on the oem database server you should not have the multiple databases so this is fine so we have done this. So now what we'll do is we will launch the, we will launch the <clears throat> soft setup again. And now what we will do is we will say set up the software only, not the, we will choose the second option, not the first option. So he, wh why I closed it is because I did not set the environmental variable. So now I'm saying set up the software only and single instance, yes. And enterprise edition, click on next based on use virtual account, click on next. This is the Oracle base. How did this pick up? Because we set the environmental variable. So it picked up that particular value. Click on next. It's going to perform the checks. If everything is fine, it's, it is going to give us the summary and it's going to give us the option to install. So if, you, if something is not right, you can always go back. So you can click the back and fix that. If, some, if everything is good, then it gives us this. And if everything looks good for you, then click on the install. What is this going to do is it's going to install the Oracle 19C database home or it's going to register the Oracle 19C database home on this particular machine, Windows machine. So that's what it's going to do. That's what it's right now doing. Now, let I'm not going to pause this particular video. So give it a, a minute for this particular setup to finish. Once this particular part is done, yeah, and that looks good. The registration of Oracle database was successful. Let's close this. Let's close all of these windows. And now if I launch the, what we need to do now is we need to create the database. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use the, we can use the DBCA. So what you, I can, I can potentially do some, there are two ways I can launch the command prompt. And I can say before creating the database, we need to create a listener. So what I'm, what we can do is we can say net CA and it's going to launch this net configuration assistant. This is an, one option or what you can potentially do. You can go to the, this Oracle 19C home and under this, you can see this net configuration. Both options are exactly same and you can click on more and say run as administrator. And again, it's going to launch the same one. Now, I'm not going to use this. So let me use the NetCA option. So let's clear this and I'll tell you why. 
I'm going to use the net CA option. Again, you don't have to. It's only for demonstration purpose. You can always create the listener from here. So here, listener configuration, click on next, add. We need to add a new listener. Name of the listener, you want to change it, change it. Protocols, TCP is fine. If you want to change the port, change it. That's your choice. I'm going to stick with default port 1521. Click on next. The, would you like to configure another listener? No, we, we need only one listener. So I'm going to say no next and it's go, I'm going to say next and finish. So let's give it a minute for the finish button to appear. And, and listener configuration completed, next and finish. So the reason why I used this is because I wanted you to see this. If I have, if I did not use this, then this particular options would have not, this particular output have not come. So here you can see it does two things. It creates the listener for us and then it starts the listener using start listener command. So it did two things. It created the listener and it actually started the listener. Now let me clear this particular screen and using the LSNR CTL, LSNR CTL status command, we will be able to see that we have a listener called OEM which is listening on port 1521 and uptime is 40 seconds, which means just now this particular listener has been created. So the listener part has been done. The database creation. So we now the next part is, so here we are. So download done, extract done, run setup done, net CA, listener part done. Now we need to create the database. So to create the database, we need, we can again use, go to the database home and here you can see database configuration assistant, right click more run as administrator. So we can do that or what we can do, we can type DBCA and both will launch exactly same options. And we are going to choose create a database. And here, what I'll do, we don't need a container database. I'm going to fill this, all of this data. And the thing is, so let's fill this now. The thing is, I did I, I have installed the database in C drive and in D drive, I'm going to create a database. Again, you can create the database in the same directory, but we should not normally do that. So that's why I got this another mount point, another direct drive. And in the D drive, I'm going to create a database. And here, what I'll do, I'll say new uh, folder, all our data. And under all our data, I'm going to create another folder called OEM rep. And this is where all my all my data file, read logs, time file, etc. will be there. So let's do that. Let's, I have not, I did not create the FRA, but I'm going to give this because without specifying the FRA, this will not go iron. And this, I'm going to type literally the password as password. Again, you should not use the simple password, but this is the home lab. So this is fine. So password, password, I'm using the password, password, and I'm going to click on next. It says admin password does not mean we know that click on yes, because I use literally the password and Basically, I can click finish, which will start creating the database, but what I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go to the advanced configuration. Now, if I wanted to select advanced configuration, why did I select this? You will ask me, there is a reason for that. So now when I go to this particular screens, you will see that everything is pre-populated. Everything is pre-populated. Otherwise I'll have to enter this every time on every screen. So OEM wrap is the database name that we are going to create. This is the repository for OEM. Click on next. OMF, if you want to use OMF, you, it's your choice. I don't want to use OMF. I'm unchecking this. This is the location and this directory we have created. So if I go to that particular directory, it will be blank. You can see all our data OEM rep. That's the directory for the database files, the redo log, control files, etc. Click on next. FRA, if you want to set up FRA, cho your choice. I don't want to set up FRA. Is You can set it up. That's no problem. Click on next listener. This is the listener with which the database will be associated. This is the listener that we created with the port 1521. So that looks good. Click on next vault label security. We don't want it. Click on next here. It shows close to 6 GB and 2 GB. I don't have that much powerful machine. So I'm going to reduce this to 4 GB and here I'm going to reduce to 1 GB. So I'm going to make that sizing. I'm okay with that character sets. We will. This is very important OEM needs this particular character set AEL32 UTF-8. This is very important. Make sure that you choose this particular character set and you choose the NL character set to AL16 UTF-16. OEM recommends that you use this character sets. Connection mode, dedicated, sample schemas. No, I'm not going to add that. So if everything looks good, click on next. And we don't want all of this. Click on next. 
this i'm going to use this i'm going to use the same password for both sys and system so i'm going to use the same password so i'm going to and literally the password is password again you should not use this again it doesn't it gives this particular warning we know that it doesn't meet the standard requirements create database click on next if review all of this if everything looks good click on finish which is going to create the database for us the oracle database creation takes a little bit of time so what i'll do is i'll pause the video now what is going to happen in the background is under this particular directory it's going to create the sysox system data files all of those temp undo users redo logs control files etc is going to create under this particular directory so it's the database creation will take some time so i'm going to pause the video and come back once the database creation is almost done So we are, the database is not at created. It's still getting created. We are almost at the end. But if you see this, this is the location. This is the location that I specified for the database home. And you can see, sorry, for the database software. So sorry, for the database. <laughs> and here you can see control files, log files, the DBF. So the OE, this is the OEM repository database. This will be used by the OEM to store the repository that's why it is called the repository and the we you can create the database on a different server that's you don't have to create the repository database on the same server but we know normally what we do is we allocate a single server for the for the OEM software and the repository database is also and you can see in the background the OEM repository database is completed so we we created the OEM repository database right now and now the database is created let's close this and what we need to do now is i'm going to go ahead and edit the the listener.era aura dot listener.aura file to set the static registration and where is the listener.aura it is under the oracle home so this is the oracle home the c drive database under that you will find a directory called network under that, you'll find a directory called admin and you can see here listener.aura and I'm going to edit that particular file. And what, I, what I'm going to do now, I, I, we can safely delete all of this. So this is the listener on host OEM 1521 and I've deleted everything else. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add, I'm going to add the, the static registration for the OEM database, OEM rep database. So here, SID list listener. So this is the name of the listener. This is the SID list for that. And this is the Oracle home. And this is the OEM rep database. So I'm doing the static registration of this particular database. Let's save this. Let's close this. And since we have done, we have modified the, since we have modified the, the listener file, what we need to do is we need to reload the listener. So let's say LSNR CTL reload. We, you can stop and start also, but we don't need to stop and start. And now if I say LSNR CTL status, OEM wrap would be static registration. So you can see OEM wrap is static registration. And what I will, what, what we will do now is that part is done. We need to set some config parameters. So these are the config parameters, local listener, allow insert with update check, shared pool size, parallel Mac servers, parallel min servers, session cache servers, Alter processes. So these are the, some of these settings and some of the settings we need to change in SP file, which means that we need to bounce the database. We need to shut and start the database for those particular parameters. And also we are going to run this PL SQL procedure auto task admin disable and we are going to disable this particular functionality. So we are going to do all of this and for that we need to connect to the database. So let's connect to the database and the database that we created, if you know, we Let's check whether the database name and it's in the correct state. So the database that we created, so I don't have to set the, when I launch the command prompt, I don't have to set the environmental variables, the Oracle home, because that's done at the system level. So now if I say select name, comma, open mode, the name of the database will be OEM wrap and open mode will be read write, which means that database got created successfully. So OEM wrap, read write, that looks good. So now what I'll do is I will, copy all of these commands together and paste it and this will set this particular settings these particular settings are basically for us to for us to register for us to 
allow us to use this particular database for the OEM. So, and we since we change some parameters as the SP level, we need to shut down the database and start up. So let's do that. And that is happening in the background. So while the database is getting shut down and start, we don't have to wait for, because the we don't have to wait. So what we can do now is we can think of installing the OEM. But before installing the OEM, we need some directories. This is the middleware home. This is the agent and this is the software lib library. We need this particular. And again, here I'm installing it under the C drive Oracle. You, you can choose your own directories. So I can right click and create these three directories. But instead of doing that right click and creating the directories, I always like to do it using the command prompt. So if, if I now show you this and if I take this, keep an eye on the background, I'm going to create three directories. One is OEM mid middleware. OEM so SW lib and OEM agent. So you can see three directories, agent, OEM middleware and SW lib, which is software lib. So these three directories got created. So now <clears throat> we, and these are three empty directories. You, you will be able to see all of these are because we just created them. So now what we are, we are at the step where we can install the OEM software. So and let me repeat all of that we have done till now. I have not done many things. All that I have done is install these three softwares. I've added the entry in etc host. Created the directory for the Oracle. Install the Oracle database home. Set some environmental variable. Use the setup.exe to register the database home. Using the netca created the listener. Created the directories for the database. Using DBCA created the database, added the static registration and reloaded the listener. And then connected to this database and changed some of the database config parameters. All that is done. Let's see if the database is started and looks like the database is also started. So that's all good. And we created this particular directories. Let's go ahead and now install the, let's minimize all of this. And let's go ahead and install the, the OEM. Now, these are the five files that we downloaded from the Oracle website. You don't have to extract all, all like that. You don't have to extract that. Don't try to extract it. It's not required. We are going to use the first file run as administrator. And this particular file is internally going to extract these particular files. So we don't have to manually extract. And this particular utility, click on yes, this particular setup is going to install the OEM 13.5 for Windows. So let's, and as you can see, it is preparing the installer. What it's doing right now is going through all of these particular files and unzipping them, unzipping them as required. Now, I want to highlight one thing before, you know, before the next screen comes, the OEM software is pretty big software. It will take time for the installation to happen. So give it a minute. It's it has still not launched the, the GUI. And you can see here, we are installing the OEM, Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control 30C. Now you can choose the advanced install or install software with plugins, or you can choose the simple installs. If you choose the advanced install, you have to go through the multiple screens. To avoid that, I'm going to choose the simple install. So click on the simple installs, click on the next, skip this particular, so skip the updates, etc. Click on next. If this is where it checks whether this particular box, this particular server is compatible with OEM and looks like everything succeeded. So that looks good. This is the location for middleware home. Now you can always browse it to that particular location or what you can potentially do is you can copy this particular path here. So this is the, we created three directories. So two directories we will specify here, the middleware home middleware home, OEM middleware, and agent base OEM agent and OEM. Now, when I click on the next, it's going to give us the warning because it will say that it needs the FQDN name. However, this machine is not domain connected machine. This is not a domain connected machine. So what we are going to ignore that particular warning. So click on next, you can see it says it needs FQDN name, fully qualified domain name. We don't have it. So I'm going to ignore it. And you can see that here, I can I can run this particular query. And if I say host name, it is just a OEM. So this is the name and um, it's okay, it will work. If it was a domain, if it was a machine which was connected to the domain, 
use the FQDN name. Now here, this is the most important part. Do not forget this. This will be the sysman password, etc. Do not forget this particular password. I'm going to use, and you cannot give the simple password. It has to be a complicated password. Pass one, two, three, four hash. This will meet the complexity. I'm going to use this particular password. Do not forget this particular password. So let's keep a note. This is the Oracle database sys slash system password. And this is the OEM, literally OEM, everything related to OEM. And I'll say sysman password. So it is actually a password for many other accounts. So I'll say OEM sysman password. Do not forget this particular password. This is very important. Now database ho host name, we have installed the database on the same. So OEM port, our listener is 1521. SID, we created the database with OEM rep and the sys password is nothing but the password. So I'm going to give that particular password. So this is pass one, two, three, four hash. This is literally password. So literally password. So I'm going to say next now. What it does is it's going to connect to the database and then it's going to do the prerequisite checks and looks like all of the prerequisite checks are succeeded. No warning. So let's scroll down slowly, see if it anything failed and looks like all of the prerequisites are. If any of the prerequisites are failed, we need to go back and fix it, but looks like everything is successful. So whatever settings or whatever changes we have done are all good. So the OEM has accepted that particular database. So let's say click on next. Now, this is very important. It gives us this particular warning. Oracle strongly recommends a L32 UTF-8. And remember, I also explained that while creating the database that we need to select this particular character set and our database is in this particular character. Now, there are ways to connect to the database and check it. I'm not going to do that, but our database is, meets this particular requirement because we have made sure. So that's good. This is the software lib. This is the software lib. This is the third directory that we created. If you remember, we created the third directory and it has already taken that. So that's good. Click on next. Now here it gives the summary of all of everything. So what you can do, you can take a screenshot of this for a, per, you know, for your reference so that we know what was the parameters that we specified while installing the software. So let's say file save as, we will save this as OEM1. We will take one more screenshot. So let's save this as OEM1. So that's done. And now if if you are okay, if not, something is not right, you can always go back and correct it. If everything looks good, click on install and the installation of the OEM software will start on this particular Windows Server 2019 evaluation version. Now, here is the quick note that I want to highlight. This particular software is pretty big software. It is pretty lengthy software. So it's going to take a long time uh, and I can tell you on my machine it takes close to one hour if your machine is powerful than my machine shorter time if it is not powerful enough longer time and I do not want to waste your one hour time watching the screen while nothing is happening only thing that is happening is OEM is getting installed so definitely I'm going to pause this video and come back either when the OEM is finished installing or either it is about to get installed either ways i'll come back and then we will see we'll log into the oem and we will verify that yes oem is up and running and we are able to log into the oem so right now right now the oem software is getting installed oracle oem 13.5 is getting installed on windows server 2019 and i'm going to pause and come back take a coffee break take a take a lunch break break or take uh, take rest if and come back once come back once this particular software is this particular part is almost done so let's pause and come back so we are at the last phase and if you can see here on the screen then all of these particular steps are completed one by one so you can see that it's green check mark so we are at the agent configuration assistant this is the last phase where it's going to configure the agent on this particular server so this once this is done once this is done the oem will be successfully installed but before before this particular soft software successfully installs i want to tell you that you know this particular tutorial this particular part so let's let me do this so that we can watch this getting finished so we 
uh, let me put it in the so 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 basically here if you if if i had to revise everything while this is i don't want to pause so if i had to revise then literally we need to install these three softwares add an entry in the etc host file create some directories for the database home for the database base set the environmental variables run setup.exe to install the database home create the listener create the directories for your database create the database using dbca do the static registration and then reload the listener and then set some database configuration parameters set some database configuration parameters for your database to support the o as a oem database since we are going to change some parameters in the sp file shut down the database start it again create the directories for your oem create the directories for oem so this is the middleware home this is the agent this is the software lib so these are the directories that we will create and once this is all done you start the setup the setup is we, we i just ran and again i as i told you we don't have to extract the software i use this particular utility this particular utility i said write run as admin and then it launched this particular gui and we went through all the screens i choose basic install and that's when it installed so the once this particular part is done once this particular part is done we will have our oem installed on this and then we can add the target now i want to say that adding the target would be not covered and you can see that's done right now on my screen that's done so what we will do we will take a screenshot one more time so that we will capture this information if we have to refer this particular information we have this so we will keep a note of this so this is very important and for safety because this is a, that would be a image file i'll what i'll do i'll copy this I'll copy this i'll create a new notepad and i'll say oem config here i'll say this and also along with this i'll save these two passwords these are very important again don't save it in a notepad or anything keep it in a secure location this is a personal app so this is fine so we have we are now let's let's minimize all of this and we are we can safely close this because the installation is completed successfully we are at the finish so let's close this and then what we need to do is we will take this particular link this is the enterprise manager cloud control link which we can get from the screenshot also you can see here this is the this is the particular link so let me highlight that for you guys so this is that particular link we are going to use this particular link to connect to oem so let's take that link open the browser of your choice and enter that particular link and for say uh, for future we will save that link we'll name that as a oem so we'll keep that as a oem and advance accept the risk and here we will give the user as sysman and the password this is the password that we used the pass 123 hash 1234 capital p hash I'm going to say login save the password also if you want to accept the license i accept the license and then we are finally inside the cloud control manager oem we are inside the cloud control so this so you can see the next part is as of now there won't be any target so if i go there won't, there will be some internal targets but not the real target so if we we what we need to do now is we need to if we need to configure the targets which will be the second part of this particular tutorial uh, and this is optional if you if you ever want to stop the oem you what you can actually go to the services you can go to the services there will be an service for the oem so if i go to o if i type o here and here you can see there will be and this is the this is the service oms service we can stop this or what we can do is we can go to we can go to the oracle oem middleware here we can go to the bin and if i search for emctl you can see there is a utility batch file called emctl so let me launch command prompt as administrator and let me navigate to that particular location and let's clear the screen and if i say emctl stop oms if i say this it's going to stop the oracle management server jvmd etc etc and once that is done if i take if i try if i launch the another browser and if i 
go to that particular bookmark if i go to that particular bookmark i will not be able to connect because the oem is being shut down once you shut down if you want to ever stop the restart the server once you stop the oem server once you stop the the oem using the emc to stop oms you also need to make sure that you stop the you need to stop so you can see here is not enterprise here we were able to connect successfully so here we were able to connect successfully and now you can see enterprise con cloud control is not currently available and the reason for that is you here you can see the oracle and management server is successfully stopped so it's stopping all of these things and the command that i used i went to the middleware home o the middleware oem middleware home bin location and i use the command emctl stop oms once you do this once you do this if you ever want to restart this particular server make sure that you also stop your database i actually need to i actually should stop wait for the i actually need to wait for the that particular command to finish and then only i can i can once this command is completed then i should probably shut down the database but i do not have that particular patience and i do not want to waste your time here so i'm saying shut immediate and once all of that is done you are free to shut down this particular server so i would like to end this particular tutorial with saying that in this particular tutorial we learned how to install oracle enterprise manager 13.5 on windows server 2019 everything was done on windows and basically all that we learned is just installing we have not configured the targets we will this that will be a sec another tutorial which will be coming where i will show you how to add the targets into the oem on windows so that would be for the next tutorial and thank you for watching and if you do like my videos if you do like my channel please do subscribe to my channel and if you do like the videos do hit the like button again thank you for watching see you in next tutorial till then enjoy have fun bye bye